we are going to do the field test for the Jane Davenport mermaid markers. And since some of you guys have expressed a desire to see me work from start to finish on pieces, I am more than happy to fulfill that request. So I have a thumbnail sketch here. I've got the paper I'm going to work on, which is Strathmore's 400 series watercolor paper. I do not actually care for this paper, but I feel like it would work well with watercolor markers slash watercolor brush pens. So I am hoping it will be a good choice. So instead of working on this first page, well, maybe I can, but I want to remove it from here anyway. So today I'm going to focus on sketching my mermaid and I'm going to work on that in time lapse so we don't end up with like a six hour tutorial. And I will see you guys again when I'm ready to start inking. guys, now that this has been penciled, we're going to go ahead and ink it. And if you are not familiar with this, this is a Sailor Mitsuo Ida. It is one of my favorite inking tools, especially because it is both Copic marker proof and waterproof. Unfortunately, they can be a little difficult to find and there's only one store of that I know of in the US that carries it. So if you guys know of any place other than jet pins where I can order these, please let me know in the comments below. I would be very grateful. So I'm going to use primarily the smaller end to ink this. And I'm gonna to try to keep my line work light and um, cute and kind of shoujo. So um, anytime I ink something, I like to let the inks cure for at least um, at least overnight. Um, the recommended time is at least one hour, but I usually let it rest overnight. And um, 24 hours seems to have the best results. So if you're inking something and you have the time to give it, or if you need to take a break, don't feel bad about doing so. So um, I am going to return to erase this tomorrow when I am fresh and the ink has had a chance to cure. All right, guys, so this piece has had a chance to dry overnight, allowing the ink that I put down last night to fully cure, so we shouldn't have smearing or smudging problems. I've got my mermaid markers handy, as well as two clean water brushes. I'm going to go ahead and erase these pencil lines and I'll check back in with you guys in a moment. And we're gonna use an inexpensive drafting brush to go ahead and brush everything off the surface. And that'll let us see if we've, if we've left any graphite lines. While we're not using alcohol markers, so this isn't going to ruin the tip if a little bit of graphite gets on the brush tips, um, it still just gives a neater appearance and it's an easy thing to fix. 
and I'm working on top of my Ink Essentials craft sheet. And I like using this because it works really well as an inexpensive, simple palette. So the first thing I want to attempt to do is apply sort of an all over color wash. And I think the two main, or maybe even the three main colors I'm gonna use for the water in general are going to be Byron Bay Medusa, I'm sorry, Blue Bottle and Deep Sea. So I'm going to start with Byron Bay and put a juicy amount of watercolor down on my painting surface. I'm also going to grab some paper towels and jam them into a cup so I can clean my water brushes off with them. And that can look something like this, really simple, just holds them sort of in place. You can also use a plain kitchen sponge and that shouldn't cause a problem. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go get a cup of water and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a wash using that and then dab my ink into that. All right, so I'm almost set up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and secure this image down because I'm using really inexpensive watercolor paper. And this is definitely not my blue tape of choice for this sort of operation, but I can't actually find my blue tape of choice. It went for a walk. So I'm gonna have to make do. In fact, for my watercolor basic series, I think I tell people to avoid using this tape, mostly out of personal preference and poor experiences on my part. So hopefully this should be enough, we'll find out. So I've got a clean cup of water, I've got my image tape down. I'm gonna start by applying a wash all over. I'm gonna go over the side. And just in case you guys don't remember, I am using Strathmore's 400 series watercolor paper. It is a cellulose, that means wood pulp based paper. So it can't handle paint as well as some cotton rag papers do. It just doesn't have the capacity. You might enjoy painting on it more and it definitely can handle some things better than cotton rag watercolor paper. So I'm not, I am not insulting you if you happen to enjoy cellulose based papers. I'm not saying you're wrong or you're a bad artist or anything kind of hyper, hyperbolic or histrionic like that. I'm just saying that I don't care for it myself. So what I'm trying for here is I'm trying to get sort of a modeled undersea look and something you need to remember with watercolors and it, I don't know, I, I just don't use dye-based watercolors a whole lot, but pigment-based watercolors for sure dry lighter than they first appear. So this is gonna be, ooh, and it got really dark on her face, so that's okay. Um, this is going to dry a lot lighter than what I just put down. I'm gonna blend that into her face a bit more. And then I'm going to focus on maybe darkening it in some places around the edges. And not that I'm a big believer in Zodiac stuff, but I am a Pisces. Some, um, actually a family member asked me why I paint so many mermaid or do so many mermaid things. I'm a Pisces and um, our horoscope always kind of gets the shaft. <laughs> I think Sagittarius probably feels that way too. So um, I try to make up for that by painting mermaid stuff and painting cute things and mermaids are cute tend to be inoffensive. Most people like them, have positive associations with them. So if you were wondering why I've been doing a lot of mermaid stuff lately, it's March, I'm a Pisces, that's pretty much why. Darken that up just a bit. Okay, 
then I'm going to allow this to dry. And I may end up repainting some of this, but what I have, the way I have a feeling these Jane Davenport markers work, and from what I saw, um, these will always reactivate. That's why I'm not applying any heavy colors now. They will always reactivate. They'll always get muddy again if you try to add too many colors on them. That's one of the reasons I'm using the Strathmore paper to remind myself to stay light, to stay loose, to not try to overwork these things. So even perhaps adding this background, while it might work on a nicer paper with nice uh, pigment based watercolors, it might not work. This might be a steaming disaster, but that is what a field test is for. That is what we're going to find out together. So I'm going to let this dry all the way through and then we're going to apply her skin tone. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. I'm going to now begin to work on her skin tone and I'm just going to use the kind of basic color they've got, beach. Um, rather than mixing one for this tutorial, usually I would try for something maybe a little more interesting, but um, I have a feeling these color, I mean, there is a, a good really dark, skin tone in reef. It's almost like a purple brown. I mean, it's a gorgeous color. Um, let me show you guys. There we go. I'm just really concerned that these might not handle as well as I hope. So um, I may come back and do another tutorial later on where we play around with darker skin tones. So I'm going to go ahead and using a lot of water I'm going to start filling in her skin. And this is not necessarily how these are designed to be used, but they're also not, not necessarily how they're designed to be used because they do, uh, Jane Davenport does sell, um, that line does carry water brushes. Um, in fact, I used some when I made, oh, I should have blended that out. A lot better than that. Um, when I made homemade sparkle pens, which you guys can totally check that video out here on my channel, um, I used her water brushes because I found them for less than, um, geez, I don't even remember which brand I saw at Michael's, but hers were cheaper and I got more of them in the pack. So I opted for hers instead. Why, why not? Why not try? Beach is such a saturated color though. Like I really feel like if you're going to use it as a skin tone, you really have to add a lot of water, which is what I recommended you guys do. But like, as you can see, it's almost like highlighter orange. And while it will dry somewhat lighter, it may not dry light enough for it to be useful for you. And I'm just using the inexpensive water brush that came in a really early sketch box. I happen to like this water brush. And it actually is the same body as the Jane Davenport markers. And I'll show you guys in a minute what I mean by that. I like how it looks uh, down here where I painted more of the water. That looks really nice with her skin. And I am getting some pickup, but it's not a big problem. So if I put just the right amount down. So I'm going to add a little got to be careful when you cap them. They can make a big mess. They are very wet watercolor markers. And they are some of the few that I've noticed that actually make use of a water brush body. So that's interesting. Ooh, I have to be careful because this is going to get muddy. I can already see it's getting muddy on my on my um, Ink Central's craft mat. So I'm going to let this dry. It's actually much more intense than it's looking on the camera. I'm hoping it'll dry more to the color that it is on the camera. So now you guys have kind of got an idea for the technique I'm gonna use for this. I'm gonna keep it really simple, keep it um, just sort of light-handed. 
I have a feeling I could actually, in fact, I know now that I can blend this out. So, uh, and this might totally backfire on me, but this is something we should test. I'm gonna do it on the face, um, which is usually the opposite of what I would tell you guys to do. I would usually say do it somewhere. People aren't gonna notice, but if I do it anywhere else, it's gonna get kind of muddy. So I'm basically using my wet water brush to reactivate the area and then I dip there we go I dip my um, that actually works looks like it's gonna work really well um, I can't say for outside of an underwater scene whether or not that would work or look right but it looks right for underwater so that is mostly what I care about right now and I'll just leave that I think And you see how muddy her skin does look, but it doesn't actually matter because we're underwater. And I was going to show you guys. So this is a really generic uh, water brush body. Um, you can find a lot of water brushes from China that use this body. They're really common on um, Amazon, for example. Now here's the Jane Davenport brush. It is exactly the same. The color top indicates indicates the color inside, although look how much ink I used just to color her skin. That's a lot of ink. Um, and I watered it down too. And this is just sort of um, an applied sticker. It's not like they screened it on the body like they did with the Sketchbox one here. And um, the caps can be a little prone to link leaking. They're fairly juicy. And there's something like a feeder tube on the inside or a breather tube. Um, and that I think is helping it really lay down a lot of um, ink or dye or watercolor, if you wanna call it watercolor, but it's a dye-based watercolor. Whereas these water brushes don't have that. So you'll get bubbles and skips when you're trying to squeeze out extra water. So those are the two, that's the two water brushes. <laughs> I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back to it. All right guys, so you can probably see how orange her skin really looks. I am actually going to try to darken it up a little more over here. Um, not with a particularly good reason. Just because I thought it might help with delineation. And if you are watching this video um, and you're new to my channel, this is, I mean, you guys saw me draw this, this image. I, I am a comic artist and I do a comic called Seven Inch Kara and it is a family friendly comic. So if you've got a kid who enjoys reading or maybe is struggling with reading and you, um, I mean, you guys know that uh, image and text interdependency really helps with reading comprehension. My mother was a reading, um, sort of like a reading recovery teacher for several years. Many of those years were while I was working on Seven Inch Kara. So a lot of what she was doing in her classroom sort of found its way into the comic that I'm making, so whether you have kids who enjoy reading or are reluctant to read. If you enjoy my art, if you think it is cute, or if you think your kids would enjoy it, there are two ways you can check that comic out and it would be a huge help to me if you did either of them. You can um, check it out for free as a web comic at uh, 7inchkara.com and it's seven as in the number, I-N-C-H-K-A-R-A.com and that is free, it just costs you time. Or you can check it out on Tumblr at 7inchcara.tumblr.com, spelled the same way, but with the Tumblr part. Or if you and your kid are not good at being patient for web comics, and I know I'm not patient for web comics, so um, I totally understand that. You can pick up all of volume one, which has chapters one through four, so it's actually, um, contains more than the webcomic does at this point in time. You can pick that up from natosoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic. Blend that out a little bit. 
but I think I think it's looking pretty good. Um, this down here is definitely kind of muddy, but you know, that's kind of the name of the game. And... Oh, wow. Waste of ink. I just smooshed it wrong. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong, the wrong marker. I was trying to clean the tip of whatever. So I'm gonna blend that out a little bit. These are easy to blend, but one of the problems with things that are easy to blend is it's bad for layering. So it will always reactivate, it will always lift up. So if you like to do a lot of layers, these might not be the watercolor markers you're looking for. So Reef is actually much redder than it looks, but this pink is actually too hot. So I think I'm gonna go with this for lip color. but I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm actually going to clean up around her eyes and then let that dry as well so I can apply a shadow layer to her eyes. And I regularly do our tutorials. So if you're enjoying this, if you're learning something and you're not yet a subscriber, I highly recommend you remedy that. Try and blend out those bubbles just a little bit. But looking good so far. And I guess while I wait for that to dry, I should do her hair and our palette is, I have to admit, an interesting one. You do get 12 colors, and with 12 colors, you can only do so much. Um, I don't really want to give her brown hair, because I give a lot of my characters brown hair. Um, and I don't want to give her red hair, because it's going to make her look like Ariel. I guess I'm kind of stuck. I don't want to give her yellow hair, because that's going to get, it's going to look really muddy and lost. Maybe my best bet would be that teal, but I wanted to use teal on the tail. So maybe the dark blue I grabbed. And I'm going to blend it out with water. I'm actually going to need a lot, I think. I'm going to blend it out with water first. That's going to be too light. And I'm going to try to be delicate and careful. No, so I had mentioned earlier why I do so many mermaids. That actually came up in November right after I did Inktober, which is every day in October you ink something that you've drawn. And I did a bunch of mermaids so that I could do a mermaid mini and it's called 31 Days Under the Waves. And my mom was like, what is with everybody and mermaids? And I was just kind of like, mm. I'm Pisces, so you know, with Pisces you either get the two stupid fish and uh or that or mermaids mermaids is like the best that you're gonna get if you're a pisces um i, f I feel bad for cancers i guess y'all could be crab people they're not crabs and they're not people so i didn't tell her then because she thinks even reading your horoscope is super stupid to do and i will at least look I might not buy into it, but I do look. Um, and that's how I can say definitively that by the time they get around to writing Pisces, whoever, I mean, almost every single thing that does horoscopes, whoever writes for uh, the horoscopes is so burnt out by Pisces. It's never anything good. It's always like, you should relax and relax and the beach and relax and swimming and go with the flow and ocean, relax. And you're such a chill person, relax. Which is great advice, except uh, a lot of us are not chill people. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be too dark. I'm gonna fix that. See, very easy fix. Not a big deal. You can almost always fix your mistakes. And I want that to kind of blend in and that because the bubbles do need some shading to them. Also, you know, I have reviewed art supplies for a really long time and something I have found is um, 
even crummy, crummy, crummy supplies, if you familiarize with the, yourself with them, if you use them enough, you can make them do what you want them to do. It doesn't mean other people should have to do it too, but you can get what you want out of those supplies. So there are certain things you guys might see me use on my channel. That's because I enjoy using them, but they're not good. <laughs> they're not good supplies and I wouldn't recommend them to other people, but I have fun with them and I've worked with them enough that I'm comfortable with their quirks and their flaws. I'm not one of those, anybody can make great art with cheap art supplies kind of people though, because like you really have to be a pretty proficient artist to, uh, turn crummy Dollar Tree art supplies. I mean, you really have to break some of those art supplies and make them into something else in order to get them to behave. Okay, so uh, move on down with a green. It's very nice grass green. It's siren, which is perfect because we're painting mermaids. So cute. And I've added water because I don't, I want to be able to build up color. So I have found that with water-based markers that you are intended to use as watercolors, i.e. dye-based watercolor markers, the only way you're going to get that is by adding water. It's a nice color though. I'm gonna have it a little thicker in some areas so I can get kind of a mottled effect, which will be cool because she's a mermaid. All right, so I think everything needs to have an opportunity to dry and then we can come back and keep on working. One of the reasons I do sometimes enjoy working on those more inexpensive papers, like this Strathmore paper here, is it tends to dry really quick and it tends to handle watercolor marker fairly well. So even though I only stepped away for like 10 minutes tops, it has already dried. So it, I can already start working on top of it. And since she's underwater, there wouldn't be any really strong highlights. So I'm mostly just going to uh, work with the idea that she's A, right side up, and B, any light would be coming from the top of the water because water has a way of sort of softening and diffusing shadows. And I'm not really concerned about it being realistic. I just want it to look like she's actually underwater. This might be too light. May have mixed too much water in there. Which actually could be a cool opportunity. Let's see. Let's find out. Let's, oh, yeah, look at that. That's wet in the wet. And if you like what you see, please do keep in mind that I have two watercolor basic series. I have a series of watercolor video tutorials here on the YouTube channel that you guys are very much welcome to watch and enjoy. And I also have a series of blog posts that go much more in depth. That's really more aimed at comic people, but I think it would suit uh, stampers and card makers quite well as um, really the focus is sort of coloring cartoony simplified imagery and the focus is not on creating realistic images. So if you like what you see me doing, I can teach you how to do it. If you'll visit natosoup.blogspot.com and then search, um, I have sidebar uh, hub pages on the left-hand side and watercolor basics should be one of them. And that has a list of all the posts in that series. Or you can check out the watercolor. Uh, no, I think it's just watercolor. I need to fix that playlist and rename it. But my watercolor playlist should also be helpful if you're interested in some simple watercolor techniques. And I also sell line art or um, Digi stamps, I guess is what some people call them, over on 
my Gumroad account. It's gumroad.com slash soup. And as long as you print it out with a toner based ink or you go over it with a waterproof ink, you should be good. But I like how this is diffusing onto this paper. It looks good. A little more ink so I can finish her eyebrows. I like how that looks. Unfortunately, it will dry lighter. Then it goes down. That is watercolor. Um, so, you know, it won't look quite as good as it just looked, but it'll still look good, I think. Okay, so we're going to use coral and we're gonna water this down a whole lot. And I gotta get all the blue out of my water brush. I might even, uh, you know what? Hmm. Thought I had another water brush up here. Ah, yes, I do. I'll just use a different water brush. Pump it a few times. Totally different brand. That is cute. So, so far these are not difficult to handle. They stay true to their color, even if you add water. And while there is some lift up, it's not at, oh, too much water. Not as prevalent as some other brands of dye-based, uh, water-based markers that I've used. Let's fix you a little bit. Now it's gonna be hard, because I already made a mistake. Just try to make it less noticeable. Blend out a little. And right above her eyes, just a bit. Clean that out. And blend a little. There, okay. That's pretty cute. So I'm going to let, actually I think her bottom lip is dry, so I think actually darken it up a little. Coral is a really pretty color. It reminds me of uh, alizarin crimson, which is one of my favorite colors for blush. Um, I would like to see her offer another set with maybe more earth tones. I know that's not quite as mermaidy, but it would definitely be useful. And I do know there are loads and loads of water color markers on the market. But if you're gonna enter the competition, you gotta be ready to play. So some better skin tones would be super duper and um, just some earth tones for more options would be great. Okay, but so far they've been fun to play with. And um, in case I didn't give you guys this caveat already, um, I purchased this set out of my own pocket and I ordered it from michaels.com. Oh, I'm going over a little bit, that's not going on. Well, that'll just have to be. Um, I, so this was not a paid review. And anyway, I'm a comic artist and a watercolor artist, so I don't really know how much um, American Crafts would want somebody like me, would want to pay someone like me for reviewing a product of theirs. Oh, I kinda wanna add, it's probably a terrible idea, but I kinda wanna add a little bit of pink to some of the weird areas because her face is like, bam, like really stand outy, very pink. And like this area where I um, let the color sort of flow into it is less pink. But you know what? I think I'm gonna leave it alone because I tend to overwork things when I start thinking like that. So it might just be best if I don't. Show some discretion. I say this and I'm like, I really wanna clean up that green line where I messed up because I was talking. So, clean the pink off of my water brush. Lightly go over, oh, that's gonna, I'm just gonna leave it alone, cause that's gonna pick up and it's gonna leave a white streak just by the nature of this kind of ink. So, let's see, I dipped my finger in it while it's still wet and I got some blue on it. So I really need to step away for a while. 
right, this has had a little bit more of a chance to dry the blue, still a little damp. So what I may have to do after I do the eyes is I may have to step away from the for the rest of the evening and come back tomorrow after it's had a chance to dry fully. Sometimes with these papers, um, when I attach them to something that is non-porous, like the Craft Essentials mat, once it soaks through, it has to evaporate coming out the other way. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna do, let's see if I can replicate it. Cause I'm kind of just freehanding. There we go, that's pretty cute. So I'll let that dry. And then just do a little bit of coral. And then try to blend it out. I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see. Fortunately, I can't move my camera. It is attached. Just try to blend it out a little bit. There we go. All right. So I guess um, other than working on the eyes, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Guys, good morning. So this has had a chance to dry overnight and that means I can make a little progress. We're going to start with starfish. And since I want to build up color, we're gonna apply it to the craft mat and then pick it up using a water brush that actually needs to be refilled. So I'm gonna put this one aside and grab that other one I have. So if you're doing water brush painting, it really helps, not necessarily size-wise, but it helps um, just time-wise to have a couple that you can use. I'm filling in that anemone. If I'd been smart, I would have started with darker color and then held my finger on the pump button so that the top would be lighter just for a cool effect. But I didn't even think about that until it was too late. But that's about the only cool thing with the T-Prime water brush that you can do. You can also push water out from the back if you need to make a puddle of water. That's cool too. Filling mechanism is a lot like a squirt gun though. So maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe it'll drive you nuts. This one needs to be re refilled too. All of my water brushes need to be refilled. So I guess that is a thing I'm about to do. But for now, I'm going to go into her eyes and I'll tell you the color in a moment. And I'm shading them. And this is what? Seaweed. And then I'm gonna go in with this teal Byron Bay. And I'm gonna step away to let this dry. And I'm going to go refill and clean out my water brushes. All right, guys, I return with a clean, with two clean and refilled water brushes. So I'm going to take my water brush and I'm just going to pull a little bit of that color into the white. Not trying to blend it out. I'm just trying to sort of make it look like a lighter shade of the green rather than just like an area of white. And clean that out. How's our flower doing? Want to make sure I use a dry hand. My hands are damp from uh, rinsing out water brushes. Definitely juicy water brushes. If you work small, and I'm trying not to squeeze. If you work small, these may be a poor choice for you. They put down a lot of ink. But if you work big, these are great because you're not constantly having to squeeze. So it really is all about you and your preference. If I had done a piece that is smaller than this, I would have had so many control issues. And I kind of had an inkling because I did, I did the, um, the sort of demonstration for you guys. So I kind of got an idea of how these work. So I did do my mermaid larger to help ensure success. 
So I don't mind failing in front of you guys. I don't want to always fail in front of you guys. It's nice. It's nice to have a win here and there. So I decided to maximize my personal chances at pulling something off and making a decent looking test piece. I'm dabbing the excess water off my brush just so it's not sopping wet because it's going to cause a bloom. A bloom is when the water pushes the ink out of the area. Um, so it sort of takes over. And while that can definitely be used in your favor sometimes, it's not really the look I'm going for. I'm also trying not to reactivate past layers. So um, you definitely want to use softer brushes if you have them so that you're not scrubbing the paper. Pretty satisfied with how her hair looks. So I need to, I think, let that dry. So I'm gonna do something which might be stupid. Gonna use a little bit of Byron Bay. That's that teal color. And um, as an artist, I really don't like referring to colors by like their kind of twee um, product names. I, I don't know. I just find that confusing for people and myself. But um, since this is a field test, I'm gonna try to be consistent. Okay, let's get some of that excess off. And you guys can't even see what I'm doing. So I'll pull way out and I'm using this teal here to add some local color shading, which I think is actually working quite well. That under here as well, because this color beach is not really a flesh tone. It's not really the color of a beach either. It's almost a fluorescent. It's very hot and saturated and makes it hard to use. Insides of her ears. And then I think I might do it under her hair once her hair's had a chance to dry. But I think that works. So I do need to do some of it on her face as well because right now she's looking kind of Mardi Gras. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll check back in with you guys. All right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry. I really like how the teal looks on her lower, lower skin, whatever. Um, so I'm going to, and I might regret this. <laughs> Anytime you take risks, you might regret it though. Uh, oh, I need it darker. Because mm. if it's not, it's just going to remove the color that's there. Gotta be careful, this brush wants to be leaky today. And who knows, this might not even dry well. But that's kind of what these field tests are all about. I mean, it's nice. My goal is always to make a piece of art or a piece of illustration that looks good. But, you know, there's always a really good chance that that isn't in the cards for me. So I have to just try my best and make peace if it doesn't. Oh, it's definitely looking Mardi Gras, but it is blending a little bit better in with the rest of the piece. Her face was uh, standing out a lot and not necessarily in a way I wanted it to stand out. Now it's less standing out and more, well, it still, does, still definitely stands out, but that's fine. That's fine, we're fine. So I'm going to wipe that off. You can leave it, but I tend to trail my hand into things like that whenever I leave them. So that's not something that tends to work in my favor. And we're gonna go back to starfish and uh, darken up that flower. And clean that out. And I'm going to 
since you want to drip, I'll just let you drip right in the middle. And I'm going to let that flower dry. All right, so the face seemed to dry pretty well. And something really interesting, it's still damp, but something really interesting happened with the flower where, um, and I don't know that I can get the camera in such a position that you guys can see it, but I'm gonna try. You see how the red, the intense saturated reddish pink or pinkish red pushed the blue that was like the undercolor sort of out of the way. That is what's going to happen a lot with these sort of dye base colors. Anytime you add um, something that is wetter on top, it's going to push those colors away. So we're actually, sorry about that. We're actually going to use this to our advantage. And I'm going to mask off her face mostly because I just, um, faces tend to be um, the most recognizable, most important part of images. And if you mess up the face, people are gonna notice that immediately. Whereas if you mess up these other areas, it's less likely to go noticed. And I'm going to use some water-based sprays and some water just to add to the water effect. So I'm gonna use a homemade spray. Um, this was made with some very watered down Emerald of Chavar fountain pen ink. Um, I was cleaning out a pen and it is so concentrated that I decided to make use of the leftovers. Let me resituate that a little bit. Gonna start by spraying kind of far away. That is if my mister doesn't jam on me. That's what happens when you get the 20 misters for $10 off of Amazon. So I'll start with that. Really? It didn't need to, I'm awesome. There we go. And that has a little bit of gold in it, but it's really going to push the color out of the way, um, which is one of the reasons why we masked off her face. And then I'm gonna use, I think this is Tattered Angels. I got this at Tuesday morning. It was on sale. I'm trying to get it to do big drops because that way you get the gold. Although those are a little too big. Seriously, a lot too big. I'll just flick the dang thing. Now it works. <laughs> okay. So we've got some massive drops and then we have some fine dispersal and I'll just go ahead and move this and I'm gonna, it's soaked under. So I'm gonna clean that up a bit. You wanna do that quick, quick because it can reactivate the, as you can see, there's some yellow in there. It can reactivate the ink and just sort of negatively affect that. And I'm also going to do up here. And I'm just kind of using my hand to mask her face off a bit. I do want some on and around the face, so, okay. That'll work. As you see, got it all over my hand the things we do for love. And it's going to make some of the color migrate away from the area. That's fine. It kind of adds to that underwater look. My page is now gonna have like a slight gold shimmer to it. That's also great in my opinion. Um, actually, I really like how that looks. But I really wouldn't want it too much on the face. I mean, I know, um, by sort of masking off the face, it just makes the face stand out more and not necessarily in a good way. It just makes it look inconsistent with the rest of the piece. And I know some of you guys are like, what is she even talking about? Why does she care that much? But I do, I do care that much. Um, but I'm gonna let this dry and it's gonna take a while because these huge drops of tattered angels, I think my spritzer is getting clogged up with the mica they put in there. Um, those are gonna take a million years to dry and I could dab them up, but but that's going to lift some of the ink color, some of the watercolor color that we applied up, and I don't want that to happen. So I am just going to have to be patient and let them take the time they're gonna take. 
Okay, so that first layer of Tattered Angels is dried and you guys can't really tell, but it's got a really cool metallic sheen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mask off the area again. And I'm going to try and get to do some of those big drops again and now it doesn't want to. How dare you work properly? But you see I'm using a scrap piece of paper to sort of mask around the face. I do want some on the face, just not too much. And then I'm gonna go back in with that Emerald of Chevoir spray. Ooh, the one that goes down way too heavy. Pull way back and try to do the face and I might regret it. Oh, just sprayed it my pencils instead. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll check back in with you guys. All right guys, so we're on the final stage or final stages because you know, you might decide you wanna go in and add some more as though it needed more, but some more sparkle. And that can be very easily done with any of the many, many sparkle markers on the market, many of which also utilize a brush pin body. But I'm just going to use some Copic Opaque White. You can also use white gouache if that's what you have. Basically any thick opaque white uh, art supply substance will work in this instance. And for that, you're gonna need a cup of water, but you probably have one handy anyway. So I'm going to grab a small synthetic brush, something that is thick enough to handle that opaque white. And I'm just going to use this to add some details. This isn't really part of the mermaid marker test, but oh wait, there was actually something else I wanted to do. But you know, I mean, I guess I can. All right, so I'm actually gonna use a little bit of water to encourage some additional dispersal. So clean water. I'm using my hand to sort of mask off the area over here as well. And this ought to give us a little bit of that underwater look. You can also use a brush and dip it in clean water and use it to flick water. But if you're one-handed, like I am right now, you can't mask the face as easily. But it's good for certain areas where you would like a little more diffused color, but you don't wanna run the risk of spraying it. So I need to allow that to dry. As you can see though, the water, or maybe you can't see, let me see if I can pull it in for you guys. Um, the water is starting to activate those dye-based watercolors, which is something we knew would happen and it's something we talked about happening in the past. And it's sort of creating these lighter areas of color. So I'm going to let the water do its work. All right, guys, we're almost done. And I have to say, I'm pretty dang pleased with how this is turning out. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply white highlights using that white wash I showed you guys. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with how this turned out. It's taken me a really long time to get proficient enough with these sort of um, very reactive watercolor markers that I would even feel confident enough to um, do a field test slash tutorial like this. But I hope that maybe this makes some of you, inspires some of you to try, or it gives you sort of the tool chest you need to try some of these techniques as well. It definitely takes some getting used to, especially if you're used to um, traditional watercolors, which handle sort of in a specific way. But it can be a lot of fun, and your end result can be really cute. So I'm going to actually add a little bit of white spatter using that synthetic. Oh. can also use a toothbrush 
to add spatter, but I find that doing it like this, you get smaller spatters or a little more controlled. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to remove the blue tape. All right, guys, I think we are just about finished. I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today and watching this field review or this field test of the Jane Davenport uh, mermaid markers. These are watercolor markers that utilize a dye-based ink or watercolor inside water brush bodies. Today, because these are mermaid markers, we completed a mermaid illustration. I hope I was able to inspire you, influence you, or get you drawing today. If so, and you wanna link me to it, uh, you can do so in the comments below. I would love to see what you drew today. So you can see there's some shimmer on there from those um, shimmer dyes and from the Emerald of Chivoir, which is pretty cool. So I hope that I have inspired you also to maybe experiment with materials you wouldn't otherwise play around with. And I hope you now feel empowered enough to use some of those dye-based watercolor markers that you might have sitting around. Um, if you enjoy my art, if you enjoy my illustration and you'd like more of it, um, I would really appreciate it if you checked out 7 Inch Kara, 7 as in the number, I-N-C-H-K-A-R-A dot com. That is my all ages watercolor comic. So if you think this art is beautiful, I know you'll love the art in that. And if you have a kid or a niece or a nephew, some young person in your life who you think would enjoy it, please do share it with them. If you're the impatient sort, you can get the first, first four volumes at natosoup.com com slash Kara, K-A-R-A hyphen comic. And the links to all that will be down below. If you're interested in more art tutorials, I have a lot of art tutorials here on the channel. You can find those by checking out my tutorials playlist, or you can head on over to the blog for my watercolor basics series. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down in the comments below. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye.